Hi and welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today I wanted to show you how to use the Gemini foil press machine. You may have seen a recent video linked in this top right hand corner where I compared my pros and cons between the Spellbinders Glimmer Foil Solution and the Gemini foil press as well. And my choice here is the Gemini foil press. You've just heard that I'd already put it on to heat up so that we can do a demonstration. I can show you how easy it is to use. I do recommend you watch that video because it really depends on personal preferences. And this one just fits so nicely in my craft room and the way I craft. So it really is a personal preference. And I've done a video on how to use the Gemini, which you're here now. And I've also done a video on how to use the Spellbinders. Check that top right hand corner if you want to see how to use that as well. But let's take a look at what comes in your Gemini box. So in the box you of course get your foil press machine. You also get two plates here as well. We have a metal plate and we have our shim plate as well which we'll be using. We have our little silicone mitts which I really love. A simple thing but really really well thought through and we're using those. You get some foil to try out as well and then there's a couple of accessories available. So we have the foil press bag. I'm all about storage in my craft room so I love that I can keep it all in here and I don't have to keep the box. I also have the extension plate so if I want to use it in my full size Gemini rather than my Gemini Junior that is an option for you as well. And then down the bottom here we have a selection of dies. You get a couple in your die pack but then you can also buy a lot more and the dies you get with a foil press are slightly different. They have lots more raised areas rather than cutting areas. So they just look a little bit different. And the Gemini offering of dies um, cut and emboss, and you can either cut and emboss or just emboss with foil. So they are a little bit different to the Spellbinders offerings that just emboss currently um, and you can do one or the other or both so you have lots and lots of opportunities to use them in there you can use your regular dies that you already have here but i also have a couple of samples down the front here so that's that heart die i just showed you that i foiled and cut out and then this is a frame that i actually foiled on to glossy cardstock look how amazing that looks on black glossy cardstock with that holographic foil on there and then it's cut out that wonderful frame as well that we've then put up and then you use it inside either your Gemini Junior or your full size Gemini. You cannot use it inside the Gemini Go. In your box you'll also find you have a silicone pad and you have these magnetic tweezers. I do prefer the Spellbinders tweezers but that's only a really simple thing. Um, but let's create something fun. So when you open your foil press you have a very thick instruction guide here but what you really need is on this first page and this is a chart of tells you the different size of dye you'll be using, so there's a small, a medium and a large, the different types of materials and then it tells you the different heat settings and timings which I really like because it gives you far more precise results compared to the Spellbinders. So we're using a small die on cardstocks and on here on your foil press you have a low, a medium and a high heat setting. My heat setting is on low and it's gone green. You heard that beep at the beginning. I set mine to 10 seconds which is how long my die needs to heat. So we are going to take our die and pop it onto our heat mat and we're going to press that start button. Again it's got a nice audible beep, something I really like and I do miss in that Spellbinders. I've already cut my foil down so I have it here. We have that wonderful holographic side, it's now beeped to tell me it's ready and we have a more matte side. The holographic side is your right side and that goes down onto your die and you'll notice it shrivels just a tiny bit and that's what you want it to do. You're then going to pop your cardstock on top and then if you want it to cut as well as foil you're going to paste your metal shim on top. If you just want it to foil you do not need that metal shim. Then you're going to place your heat plate on top and then you're going to release it out of your machine. I'm just going to move this over because I've also got to get it through my Gemini here. I'm going to grab my favourite little silicone mitts. I just think this is a really neat idea because it means I don't burn my fingers in any way, shape or form. And all I do is I feed it through my Gemini machine, which is fully automatic. And I grab it straight back out of the other side. Again, with my lovely little silicone mitt. And I can push my die cutter back out to the side. So now we get to peel our layers off and we get to see how that magic has happened. 
Again, we have our tweezers to help us lift off all of our layers and make sure we don't get any heat on our fingers. So you can see it started that cutting. I'm actually just gonna run it through my die cutter one more time because I can see one of those lines didn't cut. But this is the great thing about the Gemini being fully automatic. And I can slide this back in super easily. Again, I can grab it with that little silicone mitt that I have on there. And if you do have a full size Gemini, as I mentioned, all you have to do is buy that extension plate and it wasn't very expensive but you'll just need that to make sure you can put it all the way through and I'm going to peel this off so you can see here how it started it's super super hot so I'm going to do this very carefully and I'm just going to tease this out of here just very gently now you can see there how beautiful is that so it's foiled all of these details in here and then it's cut this amazing edge around my cardstock as well so if I just wanted to foil you don't put your um, metal shim in and it would have foiled that heart on a larger piece of cardstock and then I could have die cut or I could have done a whole background of foiled hearts and then I also have this resist piece that I could then heat up independently on my uh, heat pad here and run through with a piece of cardstock. I would add a couple of extra cardboard shims and then you could just run that through and you would have the opposite piece on your cardstock as well. So really, really versatile. You can make some absolutely beautiful cards. Think of the wedding invitations you could make on there or a special wedding card, a christening card, um, all sorts of amazing things on there. I absolutely love working with these foil presses. Um, definitely would be on my wish list if I didn't have one already for Christmas this year. Um, Hannah doesn't know, but she's getting one for Christmas this year on her wish list because she's been eyeing up mine in the craft room. And we had so much fun playing with them Thanksgiving day and making the samples for this video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the comparison, or maybe you've learned something new, maybe you've added something to your crafty wish list, do give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get all of our crafty gift guides this Christmas. Lots of tips, techniques, and tutorials coming your way throughout the rest of 2018. And in 2019, plus we're gonna be the official media partner of Creativation 2019. So this will be the first place to see all of the news, new releases, and everything else from Creativation. We're super excited. And of course, lots more coming your way. So we'll see you again very soon. All those links are in the description below and I'll see you again very soon. Happy stamping everyone. Bye.